There's more money in there for electric cars than there are for roads and bridges. So what is your definition of infrastructure? But it can't be too small uh, because what we're talking about now is needs to be transformative and it has to be big. I think it's more likely that we will have a package that is not paid for um, and that is less robust. We'll be open to good ideas and good faith negotiations. But here's what we won't be open to. We will not be open to doing nothing. The debate over President Biden's plan. Let's join it now with one of the cabinet secretaries pitching it, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Secretary Granholm, thanks for joining us this morning. You heard the roundtable right there. It seems that there are two courses ahead of the president right now. Stick with the big package. Try to get Joe Manchin on board. Break it up into smaller pieces to get Republicans on board. Let's talk about the first path first. What's the pitch to Joe Manchin to get him to buy off on this big package? Because so much of this package will help not just West Virginia, but the states like West Virginia that have been historically mining fossil fuels, extracting fossil fuels. Republicans and Democrats agree, agree upon the importance of not leaving communities behind where the market has moved in a different direction, like in coal. And so this will help to train people who are in that industry to move to these new technologies that are not a whole lot different from the skills that they may be using in mining coal. It will help to make sure that these industries are able to remove carbon from their emissions. So there's a lot in there that helps these states move to the future, in addition to roads and bridges and in rural states broadband. And transmission. So much in here to love. You, you say in addition to roads and bridges, you heard Chris Christie there saying that the president is not being fully truthful about what, what infrastructure actually is. Yeah, this, I mean, the, what is infrastructure? Historically, it's been what makes the economy move. What is it that we all need to ensure that we as citizens are productive? So we need roads, we need bridges, we need transmission, you need lights in people's homes and offices. You need to make sure that people can actually go to work if they have an aging parent or a child. This is, you know, as the president said this week, that infrastructure evolves to meet the American people's aspirations. And it's not static. In 1990, we wouldn't have thought that broadband was infrastructure because it wasn't on the scene yet. But we, of course, need broadband in every pocket of the country. Bottom line is, though, the president wants to negotiate with Republicans, and he wants to see a common vision for the future. Chris Christie talked about talking about the future. We don't want to use past definitions of infrastructure when we are moving into the future. And by the way, when other countries are investing significantly in their infrastructure, to overcome us. Research and development, that's also part of a manufacturing infrastructure that we have seen go. We're at a 70-year low in terms of manufacturing jobs as a percentage of the economy. The bottom line is, Chris, we've, I mean, Chris, <laughs> I'm sorry, Jordan, <laughs> Chris, we've got to move forward. <laughs> Yes, I know. I'm in debate. I apologize. But anyway, bottom line is we have to move forward. We have to look forward and we have to win the future. And this is the biggest investment in the future seems, of America that we have seen in our lifetime. It seems like the ceiling for Republican support is about a trillion dollars, which is less than half of what the president is proposing right now. Is the president willing to talk about a package about that size, maybe break up the big package into several pieces? The president is willing to negotiate what this looks like. He knows that, it, that his current plan is going to be changed. That's the nature of compromise. So whether it is in one big package or several packages, he wants to talk to Republicans because, again, a lot of the Republicans that he's talking to have actually introduced bills that are consonant with what's in this package. At the end of 2020, there was a massive Energy Act of 2020 that was hugely bipartisan that made uh, uh, authorizations for investments just like this stuff. So I, I don't know how you can say in Texas that it's not important to invest in transmission grid. These are things that Democrats and Republicans know need to happen. It's it's just a question of the process to be able to get to the finish line. The Obama administration, looking back, thought they spent too much time trying to get Republican votes on health care when it wasn't possible. How much time is the president willing to give uh, the Republican Party to see if there really can be bipartisanship before he goes for a Democrats alone strategy on reconciliation? Um, first of all, you could get a bipartisan uh, solution on reconciliation, too, by the way. But I do think um, the president wants to give it the time necessary to see 
if he can achieve that bipartisan support. So, you know, hopefully there will be progress by Memorial Day. I know that he wants to get this done by summer. So, you know, not doing something is not an option. He wants to see this happen. And we are still $8.4 million, million, million jobs in the hole from before the COVID, uh, the COVID crisis hit. So we know we need to move. We need to move quickly. But we also want it to be bipartisan. We are still in the hole, but the economy is starting to grow at a rapid clip. Do you think that's going to be make it more difficult to get the support you need right now? Well, but you know what, George, even though the economy is growing, it's growing because of the excellent execution that this administration has made on getting shots in arms and in getting checks in people's uh, pockets. The, but that is for the COVID. That was the rescue package. This is actually recovery. And because we have disinvested in our nation for so many years, the fact that we have seen a 40 percent decline since the 1960s in infrastructure, we, have, we are competing globally. If we want to win this race, if we, you know, standing up, for example, fabrication facilities for semiconductors. That's in this package, too. And if we don't do that, you better believe we're going to lose the ability to do the electric vehicles, to do the technologies that are important, making the battery supply chain for the batteries for electric vehicles here in the United States instead of relying on other countries. We need to make these investments. We need to make the investments at the size of the need for America to win. And so that's what this is about. He does not want to see it diminished to a point where we're not going to achieve what we need to achieve for this country and our people. Secretary Granholm, thanks for your time this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.